Historie allein bekommen oder mit Religion? Ha? Alle meisten Historien. Und du meinst nicht? Come on, come a vision closer. Hi. Hare Krishna, welcome everyone to the temple. It's nice. Hare Bol. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
So we first reading uh, from the diary of Prabhupada. It's not on the board. Let me see if I find it. January 27th, 1976. So this is of a, a servant of Srila Prabhupada who kept a diary of what was happening. So it's very nice. So uh, not many people, not many devotees uh, did that. So he was the only one. Others, they're writing books now about what they remembered. But you know, this was, he wrote it on the same day or maybe the same week. So it's very, very detailed. Although it's otherwise, after, if you write a book after 50 years, your memory is fading and, and you forgot and this and this and this, you know, like, like that. So this morning, uh, Mahamaya, one of the Western ladies serving here in Mayapur, she is American, gave me a polite note requesting me to ask Srila Prabhupada's question for her. She wanted to know whether women could be allowed into the temple room during menstruation. If so, she asked, should they wear silken garments? The reason she asked was because ladies in India generally do not enter the temple during this time. I broached the subject with his divine grace after his morning nap. He immediately became disturbed and without replying to my question, sent, him, sent me to get Tamil Krishna Maharaj. When Tamil came in, Papat asked him, what is this? He's a brahmachari and he's being approached by this woman. I explained to Tamil Krishna what the inquiry was and showed him the note. He then assured Sri Papa that things were not what they seemed. He described the letter as very discreet and polite, having been signed the Matajis of Mayapur. Apart from that, Tamil Krishna said, Harisori is actually a householder. Although I wear white cloth, I've never once made my reference to my wife. Srila Prabhupada assumed that I was a brahmachari. Prabhupada gave a different smile. Oh, I thought he was brahmachari. And he's being approached by some woman for this. Now I can understand it's all right. So he gave his permission for the ladies to attend the temple functions and approved the wearing of silk. Later they were duly informed. So uh, fabrics, wise, like nylon, is not pure. Even if you wash it, it's not pure. Uh, but cotton, silk, and wool are pure. But cotton, you can only wear one day. And then it's considered, uh, you need to wash it to go, like say, on the, on the altar. Silk, you can wear several days. 
it's very pure. And wool, you can clean it by hanging it in the wind, and the wind will go through the, through the fibers and, and purify it. So if you go on the altar, generally devotees, they wear silk. Because silk. So you have two kinds of silk. This is silk, but it doesn't shine. And you have silk that shines. So silk that shines, the silk worms are killed in the process of making the silk. Do you understand? And this is, so uh, uh, this is called ahimsa silk, in which the silkworms are not killed by making this silk. So you have himsa and ahimsa. So you have also himsa milk and ahimsa milk. So some devotees have become vegan because they feel this, they feel sad about the cows, you know, in the slaughterhouse, and so they don't want to drink milk anymore. But we have some farms at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, uh, for instance, and they sell the, the milk from their cows, and that's called ahimsa, because the cows are treated nicely, and they are not uh, suffering. Uh, but, saying that, so, so devotees, they feel sad about the cows being treated like that, but the cows, you can say, if we stop drinking milk or milk products, then, uh, then the, the slaughterhouse, then there will, will be less killing of cows. But, but, at the, but at the other side, you can say, if the cow, if the milk of the cow is offered to the Lord, then in his next life, in her next life, the cow will take birth as a human being. So what is better? To, 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 to not drink her milk and she will be slaughtered and have no chance of taking a human form or take her milk. So, you know, some people decide this way, some leave that way. Prabhupada gave a, yeah, oh yeah, okay. Prabhupada's reaction was all the more endearing, not just because of the vigilance he demonstrated in protecting his disciples' spiritual life, but also he was completely free from any false ego in the matter. He did not become at all defensive when he saw that things were not quite what he had first thought. Rather, he showed his purity and absence of false ego by his humble and objective response. Jai. Every day, I try to give Prabhupada a really good workout during his massage. For, because in Prabhupada, he had one hour massage, you know. For at least, oh, one and a half hours, I rub, squeeze, and knead his body while he sits meditatively. Tamil Krishna Maharaj mentioned to me that on the day he had given Prabhupada his massage in Calcutta, he had noticed that there were no one else was present. Prabhupada's body was very soft and subtle, supple. But as soon as the visitor entered, he became alert and his body tensed up. It is a fact. Here in Mayapur, with no visitors to speak out of, he sits so relaxed and quiet that he practically seems unaware that I'm massaging him at all. Several times he has inquired when I have completed my work whether I was finished or not. <laughs> it's almost like someone talking, taking the car into a garage for a service, going off for an hour or so, and then returning to inquire whether everything is done. Jai. So now we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 6, chapter 4, text 40? Yeah. Okay. John Maria Shayaton Vayat, Itaristas Chatishu Abhidat Swadat, Tene Brahma Rirayarika Vijay, Muyantiat Suryaham. 
Tidio fari vritam yeta bini mio etra trisa gamisha damna sfera sedali rasta kukam sacham param di mahi Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Can this be a little, a little soft, no? Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Ya samut patitam deha Akasan manyam uvanam Atma jigyasaya yacce Sagunam adivartate Ya samut Patitam deha, Aka ave aka san manyam uvanam, Atma jigya sayayache, Sagunam adivartate, Yasamutpatitamdeha <laughs> Ya samut patitam deha Akasam manyum ulvanam Atma vigyasaya yache Sagunam adivartate Someone want? You want to try? <laughs> Who? Ya samut patitam deha Ya samut patitam deha Akasam So it's best if you if you repeat the melody and uh, it was just yesterday you were chanting a whole different melody, which was very beautiful, which I wished I would remember, but it's just, it's it's the same, yeah? You just repeat what the speaker sings, even if you don't like it. What it is? Atma jigyasaya yache Sagunam adivartate Do you want to try? Ya samut patitam deha Akasam yamubanam Atma jigyasaya yache very good. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who. Samut patitam. Suddenly awakened. Dehe. In the body. Akasat. From the sky. Manyam. Anger. Ubanam, powerful, Atma Jigyasaya, by inquiry into spiritual realization of self realization, or so, yeah. by inquiry into spiritual realization or self realization, Yachit, subdues, Sa, that person, 
Kuna, the most material nature, Ativartate, transcend. So you understand the English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are you German or what nationality are you? Spanish. Spanish. Your English is also you. Yeah. Because we have a, a Russian translator, but no Spanish to take, but you speak. Translation. One who inquires into self-realization and thus subdues his powerful anger, which awakens suddenly in the body as it fallen from the sky, transcend the influence of the modes of material nature. Please repeat. One who inquires, One who inquires into self-realization and thus subdues his powerful anger, which awakens suddenly in the body as it fallen from the sky, transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. When one becomes angry, he forgets himself and his situation. But if one is able to consider his situation by knowledge, one transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. One is always a servant of lusty desires, anger, greed, illusion, envy, and so forth. But if one obtains sufficient strength in spiritual advancement, one can control them. One who obtains such control will always be transcendentally situated, untouched by the modes of material nature. But this is only possible when one fully engages in the service of the Lord. As the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mam Chayovya Bhakti Yogena Sevate Sagunan Samati Dhyaitan Brahma Bujaya Kalpate One who engages in full devotional service, who does not fall down in any circumstances at once, transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the spiritual platform. By engaging one in devotional service, the Krishna conscious movement keeps one always transcendental to anger, greed, lust, envy and so forth. One must perform devotional service because otherwise one will become victimized by the modes of material nature. Sri <laughs> Dino Bando de Catris de Gopisha Gopa Kakaka Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare everyone Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I'll read the verse again One who inquires into self realization and thus subdues his powerful anger, which awakens suddenly in the body as if falling from the sky, transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. So, the living entity has six, six enemies. Oh, no, I don't want to lose. Okay, no. <laughs> OK, 
Can you make it stronger? A little stronger. Enjoy. <laughs> Somewhere or there. Maybe you lift it up a little bit and then. then uh, no, no. no, sometimes, no, if you pull it from here, no, no, that, that it's more imbalanced, that, that it's shorter here, then it's not so heavy. You understand? Oh, anyway, it doesn't work. It's stem. Yeah, it worked. Hare Krishna. So, the, we, the living entities, have six enemies, which uh, disturbs us and which prevents us, if we are falling victim of them, uh, to become a pure devotee. And those are described as, who remembers one of them, the new people? Do you remember one of them which were mentioned, those enemies? Uh, lust. Lust, very good. Do you remember another one? Anger. Oh! <laughs> and, uh, lust, anger, envy. envy. Greed, no, anyone else? Huh? Yeah. Illusion? And madness? Envy, greed, lust, anger, greed, madness, envy, and illusion. So these are the enemy. So there are the modes of nature. And it's like, like we are like a puppet, and they're pulling, and they put anger in us, you know, and they're. And, that's, mm, and the envy. Mm. <laughs> so look, like that's all. Oh, oh, illusion. Oh, oh crazy. Oh. So you you recognize you recognize that in 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 everyone. You know you because you recognize it. You know you, you see if someone is on the street and you you know. He, He's intoxicated, or a ghost has entered his his body, and he doesn't know what he's doing anymore. Or someone is angry. Sometimes you, you, you know, you're just you're sitting in your room, and you hear someone. Ah! Are they fighting with each other, or they just so angry and they, ah! <laughs> and they kick the door. <laughs> uh, it's it's like that, and uh, so for for a devotee. We want to be in goodness, yeah. So we don't want to be affected by 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 these things, you know. We don't want to be lusty. We don't want to become angry. We don't want to be like yesterday. We were talking about envy and jealousy, about someone who is better than you. We just wants to be peaceful, and just satisfied, yeah. And and then if you're peaceful and satisfied. The life is nice, it's relaxed, it's cool, you know. But if you're, you know, if if you, if you, if you have these desires or lamentation or lust or angry, then the soul is, you know, peaceful in the body. And so, by hearing from the scriptures and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. One becomes more and more aware, conscious of the difference between me in my pure state and me being, you know, in Maya, an illusion that, 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 like that. In the beginning, it's difficult, but by practice, you you learn learn more and more how how to you know, how to be stay peaceful. It's very, very difficult. You know, because as soon as you go outside, you know, there is maya, the illusory energy pulling you. Enjoy, enjoy, have smoke, have a drink, have a joint, have this, have that, relax, be cool. You know, or or like, like this. And uh, so it's very difficult. If you're here, then it's quite easy. You know, no one is smoking, no one is drinking, no one, no one is angry at the moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> can happen sometimes. The devotees also fight. Um, so, so he is very easy. But to go outside, you know, to have a job, to deal with, 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 with people, 
uh, who are you know jealous and who are lusty and who are angry and who are moaning and who are smoking and and talking nonsense all the time about things which 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 is no interest to you and it's so isn't it if you have a job then it's so boring I had it when I was young very young you go to a birthday you know and it's what they talk about is someone is born or someone died or for the rest it's also village talk so not interesting you know no one ask you know what is your latest realization <laughs> or, or you know uh, uh, things like that actually when I meet someone when I meet someone uh, for the first time uh, if I'm on the street or even if I see them in, in the temple then I ask them what is the first remembrance in this lifetime so do you remember what your first remembrance was in this body think about it do you remember i guess when i was like little very little yeah how old around three maybe yes you were eating what? A plant. A plant. Yeah, yeah. And your mother told you not to do that. Yes. <laughs> I, I was afterwards. I was went uh, sick. Went to, the, to the hospital. Right? It was poisonous. So that's why you remember it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you? Me? Yeah. I have to remember being a child. Little louder. A little deaf. I have to remember being a child to the moment I was uh, swimming in, in this in this beach where I I, I used to hang out with my mom. And I was I, I was over her shoulder, and her hair looked uh, like a mermaid hair. It was very, it was very long and underwater, and I was holding her fur in the water. It was so very How old were you then? I was maybe five. Not fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just see, you know, like that. So, uh, so I tell the people then I say, so you are the same person. But that, at that time, you interest had a doll, maybe, or a train, or a ball. You were playing, and that was your life. You were just centered, your life was centered around playing with your train or whatever. And then you grow up, you become a teenager, yeah, your interest changes, and then you get older, your interest changes again. And in this way, your interest changes, but you are the same person. So, Krishna consciousness, this thing of the science of purification is to realize who am I in this body. So I, when I was very young, like now I'm 74, and I feel like a young person trapped in an old body. <laughs> yeah, my body is not working anymore. You know, it's everything is is not comfortable. My my feet, my knees, my elbow, my back. And I have to do more yoga, but I'm doing already stretching. I have to do more just to to resist the uh, uh, just the, the attacks of old age to fight against it. You know, to stay loose. So when when I was young, around three four, I felt like an old person in a young body, and I felt like an old person. You know, I was very in my mind. And I was doing things with numbers and numbers and cards. I was remembering that if I wanted to find a question to an answer, I had a, a deck of cards, yeah? And I would go like, divide them into, and then again, the right side, I would divide till the last card was there. And if that card w would be the, the heart, the woman, the, the queen of hearts, then it was a positive result. It's almost like tarot, you know? <laughs> but I was doing that when I was, when I was four, tarot, yeah, when I was four years old, but then when I became six or so, I, I, then, I, then I identified more with my body and that was on a, on a distance. You know? But when I was young, I was more this, the, maybe the person from my past life, 
you know, the old person. It was in the trap, the young body, but was thinking still of an old person. And anyway, and now it's the other way around. <laughs> so now I'm 74, but I feel like the, the 17 year <laughs> dancer. <laughs> like that. So it's very funny. Anyway, so um, so these um, in the in the seven, 77 in a, in the, in New York we had a, a drama group called the Vaikunta Players, and they performed the Age of Kali. So this is the Age of Kali, and this Age of Kali, so the Age of Kali is uh, started about five thousand years ago. And before that, it's also called the, the, uh, the Iron Age, the Iron Age, the age where men live at the most 100 years, sometimes a little longer, 125, but generally 100 years. So the previous age, men lived 1,000 years. If you read the Bible about Abraham, and so they lived like 1,000 years or something like that. And, the, and uh, the age before, they lived 10,000 years. And the age before that, the golden age, that was the silver, they lived 100,000 years. And in order to perfect their life at that time, they, um, they performed Hatha Yoga for 60,000 years. They were sitting in meditation. So now, it's Kali Yuga, so where we only live a hundred years at the most. So by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, we have been given the most simple process of becoming purified by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So it's very simple. And if you chant that regularly, a minimum 16 rounds, then it's like you put on a raincoat. So you don't get wet by the rain, but in this way, lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, you know, they, they don't touch you so much. Still a little, if you don't chant nicely. If you go, hi, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, hmm, wonder what for Prasad or what for breakfast will be. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You're, you're chanting, but your mind is also everywhere else. But if you really chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, no, no, no thoughts entering your mind, just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So when, but thoughts come in, so just, Hare, just immediately take it out. But sometimes you chant and then a thought comes in and then you follow that thought and then suddenly you're like this. It still happens to me, you know, so, and then you're thinking of the thought coming in. Then you say, oh, are you sorry, please, sorry. go back again. It's like that. So the example, it's like if you have a chariot, you know, and there's horses in front, and you have the charioteer, like in the Bhagavad Gita, is the example, and the driver has to control the horses, or else one horse goes, oh, a nice grouse. It goes there, wants to eat the grass. Oh, a, a nice lady horse. <laughs> it goes that way. <laughs> so it's go, hut, hut, hut. Sometimes you have to go, Chew! you know, hit, hit the horse. So, um, so in the same way, you know, our senses, our eyes, our nose, our ears, our genitals, and it's, they always want to enjoy. It's, 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 it's the nature. Even, you know, even if you become a pure devotee, those thoughts come in. But if you're a pure devotee, what happens then? If, if you're not a pure devotee, you say, hmm, nice. But if, you, if, if you're a pure devotee, you go, ugh. You know, your, your lips curl and you're going to, <laughs> dirty thoughts. So it's, there's one Maharaj, a king. Uh, what was his name again? Uh, what's the name of that king? You know, when, he says, whenever I think of sex life, I spit. You know, my, my lip goes like, ugh. A spit. King, King, what's his name again? I forgot. Huh? Anyway. Huh? No, no, no. It's, it's another one. Anyway. So, so this hearing the Bhagavatam and chanting Hare Krishna gives us uh, 
more, more that we can see more what is illusion, what is Maya, and what is, you know, real. And that's why it's up to you, it's up to you if you, if you follow the process perfectly, or like 10% or 50%, you get back whatever you put into it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Is this that? So, so why are you here today? Welcome to here. Huh? Search of two. Yeah, but yes, but why, why, why were you? Did someone invite you yesterday? <laughs> so I invited him to come. So he's here. So on the Sunday feast, the Sunday program, the Brahmacharis, Haribol. So on the Sunday feast, if you see a guest, so then talk to them and invite them to come to the temple, tell them a book. This way, more people will come, because that's the way I join. You know, they say, I came on a Sunday, and then on a Sunday, and then they said, why don't you come tomorrow morning? And I said, okay. I lived very close, five minutes away. And then they said afterwards, so I was chanting, and said, uh, then there was breakfast, and said, do you want to clean the pots? Can you clean the pots? Okay. And when I finished cleaning the pots, I was chanting a little more. <laughs> oh, no, first I cleaned the temple room. <laughs> and then there was prasadam again. And then they said, you want to clean the pots? <laughs> so I was there all day. And they said, are you coming back tomorrow? And I said, okay. <laughs> so I was there all, one, all week I came from morning to day. And in the end, because I was still smoking, I smoked one cigarette. So, and, and then, you know, then after a week, they said, why don't you join it, move in? So if you don't ask, you see, it's just like money, Lakshmi. Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi, you don't have to worry about money. It, it comes naturally. You just have to catch it. Or you can ask for it. <laughs> Because in life, you have no, but you can get yes. That's, that's life. And uh, so if, if you want to learn something or, or anything, you, you just ask. And, and sometimes you hear no, and sometimes you hear yes. It's like that. It's very simple. And you know, when I, like when, when I was a Pujari, uh, let me see what I want to say. Yeah. So the guests, they were all bringing in, in the manor bags of chapati flour. Yeah. We had so many chapati flour. So when I saw someone as a pujari bringing a bag of chapati flour, I said, Hare Krishna, uh, we have very much chapati flour. Next time, can you bring a pineapple or some mangoes, I say, oh, yes, yes, yes. So they go. <clears throat> or I always ask guests, the Indian guests, what's again, <clears throat> what are you doing? You know, what kind of work? <clears throat> so someone said, <clears throat> I, I'm, a, I'm a factory with fab fabrics, cloth. I said, oh. Would you, could you give some cloth for altar, for the altar, new curtains, the curtains are a little broken. So he gave me cloth, enough to also make an outfit for the deity. It was crushed velvet. It's very nice. So like that. And then, so when I was at Pujari at the manor, there was Radha Gokulananda, Radha Krishna deities, and there was Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. But at one point they went to another temple. And then we got Sita around Lakshman and Hanuman. But they had no clothes, no jewelry. So I made pictures of each outfit. Yes, and I put them in a book. And I said, <clears throat> so I showed this book with the pictures to, to 
devotees to guess, to the Sankitan man group, the woman Sankitan group, to the, to Indians who were rich, and I said, this one is, would you buy an outfit for Sitaram outfit for Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman? This one is two hundred euro. This is five hundred euro, and this is a thousand euro. And they said, oh yes, 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 okay. So and then I got all the outfits, but then and I didn't have jewelry, so I had twenty pounds. And I bought for 20 pounds jewelry and I sat in front of the temple with the jewelry. I put them down and I was selling them for for little more than what I paid for. See? So when guests came for Sunday, I said, would you like to buy some uh, gift for Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman? Oh, yes, yes. So then I had 30 pounds and then I sold that for 50 pounds. And then I ended up with three pounds, three thousand pounds of jewelry. You know, it's just like that. It's f so simple. You just have to ask and to use your brains how to improve. And and just like I said yesterday, if you ask anyone who comes here, what do you do? You know, if someone is a plumber, someone is an electrician, someone is a car mechanic, then you say, "Oh, my car is broken. Can you please fix it?" Oh yes, no problem, for free. You know? So actually as devotees, you, you don't need to, you shouldn't spend any money of Krishna. It should be all given to you and service should be rendered to you. If you treat the congregation nicely, if they feel this is my temple, then they're willing to do that, isn't it? Yeah. Was machst du, Außen? What? Two jobs. I have two jobs. You have a job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one job is in tea, 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 yeah. and supermarket. Tea, tea. I sell tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sell tea. And the other one is. I okay. So you can on Sunday you can help serving. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do? I'm traveling now. Okay, you can travel for Krishna. You go <laughs> distribute books. <laughs> It says, Hare Krishna, I like to travel, have, to, have a look at this book. So you engage, you can engage all your, what you like doing for Krishna. Isn't it, isn't it simple? Krishna comes is so simple. Prabhupada said, Krishna comes is so simple, you miss it. <laughs> it's like that. Do you have any questions? about what I've said, what was in the book, what I spoke about. Um, loud, loud, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the babies we have in the temple, um, how long do we serve them? How long I dress them? Yeah. So I was Pujari there, I was there from 77 till 85, but I was also doing theater. So sometimes I was doing theater, but then again, five years, but I also was Pujari in Amsterdam. When the deities of Radha Desh, Radha Gopinath and Jagannath, they were in Amsterdam. Jagannath was installed by Prabhupada in Amsterdam in 72. And Radha Gopinath, Lalita Vishakadevi were installed in, in 75, not by Prabhupada. But then they purchased, then we had a big temple in Amsterdam. But then they got rather this. And since they got rather this, Amsterdam became smaller and smaller. And now we have no one able to stay in the temple that small, unfortunately. And now it's so expensive to, to, to buy a, a property. So you are very lucky. I mean, I love this temple. It's so beautiful. You know, and, and you own it, you don't, right? You own it. It behurt on temp to you don't need to pay any rent. So this, this no. is not the temple that I... Uh, yeah, but that's this. Uh, but you, you have your own temple, you're so fortunate, you know? Yeah. And then it's so pretty, someone who made this temple, so beautiful. The only thing I would add is maybe a little gold leaf. You know, a uh, real gold, you know, imitation gold. To, just like you've been to Radha Desh, some of you, and you see how how they are fixing everything gold and, and make the make the ceiling with, with 
with, with birds. And, and so my godfather was Suterman. He, he moved in two years ago or so, and he is a trompe l'air. It's, you know, he can make on a wall like it's the sky with planets, and he did that as a job, you know, to have a, or he, you can, like, it's like there's a plain wall, but it looks like there's a garden with pillars, uh, you know, that's why it's like an illusion uh, kind of painting that creates something which is not there, because it's normally a flat wall, but you actually, you see a veranda and then pillars and then a garden and then maybe a wall behind it, so it becomes 3D. So, but Sutama, my godbody, is doing that now in Radevis and uh, he's fixing it so it becomes, every year it becomes more beautiful and after them it becomes less beautiful. <laughs> anyway, Hare Krishna. So, the question, so that was the question, so the idea. Any other question? Yeah. No, 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 no. We celebrate then, of course, Ram Nomi and Usera, Ram and Diwali. It was they, 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 they installed them mainly to to attract the Indian population because the Indian population, many of them, they prefer Ram than Krishna. You know why? Because Ram. He was just perfect. He behaved perfect. He was the perfect son. He had just one wife. He was the perfect brother. He was a perfect king. And Krishna, he steals butter. And he has 16,108 wives. And he's lying. And, you know, so for them, it's, it's, it, they can't conceive that he is God. Or it, it, that he's less than he's less than Ram. So that's why they prefer Ram, because he's, you can't make any fault of him, find any fault of him, you know, like that. So like, like that. But anyway, but just by coming to the temple, many Indians became devotees, uh, you know, Krishna devotees, so uh, it's like that. But so you, 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 you attract them first, and then by hearing the philosophy, they become more Krishna conscious. Okay, other question? So now, just uh, one week or two weeks ago, uh, in Ayodhya, that's the, so Ayodhya, there was a temple. Ayodhya is the birthplace of Lord Ramachandra, just like Vrindavan, and then Navadvip for Goritai, and Jagannath Puri is Lord Jagannath. And so Ayodhya is where, where Lord Ram was to, uh, uh, appeared. So there, uh, about 500 years ago, the England, uh, India was invaded by the Mughals, by the Muslims. And they, they broke down the temple, many temples, and, and they made a mosque there. So a few years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, the Hindus attacked that mosque and broke it down. So now they made a temple again, they erected a temple, and they just installed Lord Ram. The Prime Minister was there of India. And so I, th I think, because Ram, Ram Raj, Ram Raj uh, that means when Ram was king, there was no pestilence, there was no war, there was no hunger, there was no grief. It was everything was perfect. So the Hindus, the Indians, uh, they would love to have that again. You know that there is the Ram Raj Ram Raj, so the, the kingdom of God. So I hope that now the deity is installed, that. It will, the world, the whole world will become more auspicious with Lord Ram there in his original, uh, 
you know, place in Ayotia. So we'll see what's going to happen. Maybe it's, it, it, maybe the age of Lotitania, the golden age, will come more faster now. Now, now Lord Ram has appeared. We'll see. Yes. I feel that there's a huge louder, Indian, louder. I feel that there is a huge Indian congregation who is actually in that like process of believing more in what Mount Shanti is so, due to this incident. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who they worship, as long as long as they Vaishnav, if they worship, uh, you know, if they worship Raha or 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 Vamana or Lord Balaram or Lord Ram, like that. Doesn't matter as long as you don't. I like myself, Lord Balaram. <laughs> so I'm a Balaram Bhakta. And, but, you know, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but I, I prefer the pastimes of Balaram, and I also, I prefer Dwarka above Fraja, although Fraja, I know, is sweeter and higher, but I prefer to be in Dwarka. It's just, you know, it doesn't matter as long as you're attracted to the Lord. <laughs> you look really <laughs> it's like that you know I have a god brother in Holland and he's a round doctor and it doesn't matter he likes Hanuman and he goes to a temple where there's anyone else question any of the Russian devotees have a question Louder. Uh, it's a very general question. I would like to know who wrote the Bhagavad Gita. What? What? Who wrote the Bhagavad Gita? The Bhagavad Gita? Yes. It's written in the beginning there. Uh, well, who, who wrote it down originally was Srila Vyasadeva. And then, uh, but that was in Sanskrit. You see, on, on rolls of leaves. You know, and they still, they, some of them, they still exist, uh, at least, they, you can find them there, they bind it actually, they go like this with wood. They, so, he was, this knowledge was given to him, Vyasadev, about the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita. It's just like the Ramayana, the story of Lord Ram, it was, uh, there was a, there was someone who was a very, how would you describe uh, Valmiki? How would you describe Valmiki? What was he? Huh? He was a rogue. Yeah. You're a rascal, a murderer or whatever. He, a robber. A robber. He was a robber. But you know a robber? Someone robs things, steals things. You know, like... In a village, in the old days, you know, there's no light. So if a traveler goes to hey! your money or your life, you know, you, you, like, like this, you know, even in Holland and Germany, you know, you don't travel at night, but even if you're in a chariot, then people come with horses, Zorro or someone, and they go, hey, money, you got gold. <laughs> even, even in Mayapur, if you go to Mayapur from Calcutta, to Mayapur, if you travel at night, there is a railway crossing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even the head pujari, he was robbed because he, he, bought, he purchased cloth for the deities. And then they have to stop for the train, for the train, you know, and then robbers come and they go like this. So whenever you go to Mayapur, don't travel at night. And if you do hide your things in your socks or whatever, whatever, if you have, if you have money or like that, anyway. It's all Christian's arrangement, but uh, you know, it's not nice if you, if you have something for the deities. So, so he was a robber. And he couldn't... So Narada Muni, who was a saint, and he travels, he's able... So you have... You have... You have... A, a perfected yogi, it's called a Siddha yogi, he can travel 
in the sky, yeah, without wings. They just have to get that CD that they're able to move. Like, this is, when I, did you, did you remember when you were young that you had this dream that you, that you could fly? Who had a dream that you could fly? Only one, two, three, four. So, because once we were able to fly, you know, and, it's, and then you get, you wake up and you go, oh, <laughs> I can't fly. It was going, shh, <laughs> so nice. So, because once we flew, maybe as a bird or maybe as a human being, you know, or like, like a, a demigod. So, in the Bible, they're talking about angels with wings, they can fly, you know, they come to earth and say, you know, and say, Oh, Mother Mary, and you, you know, there's Jesus in your womb, blah, 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 blah. But in our Vedas, there's also living entities like you and me who can fly without having wings, just by, by their will. And so Narada Muni is like that, he has this power, and he, he flies from planet to planet and he's preaching. So, so he came across. A hun this this robber, and he wanted to, uh, to, to, to you know to purify him, and he said chant the name of Ram, you know, but he couldn't chant the name of Ram. He was so sinful he couldn't utter Rama Rama Rama. So then he said chant Mara. So Mara is name of death. It means death. Huh? So he was chanting. Mara 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 and it changed into Rama. And then he chanted for many, many years, and then all the knowledge of Lord Ram was came to him and he wrote it down. The story of Lord Ram, his appearance, the way everything happened. So this thing called inspiration. You know, just like, for instance, the Beatles. You know, they wake up with a melody and they write, and, it, and they say, oh, it just came to me. The words, or sometimes the melody. And I myself, I'm a singer and I'm a writer. And sometimes I, I, I have just two lines, or sometimes five lines. And then I write them down. If I don't write them down, I forget. You know? I, I have to write it down as soon as I wake up. One time I woke up with a whole melody, with words with it, but I didn't write it down. And I don't remember a thing of it. You know? So, so now if, if I wake up at, say, 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock with, with, with some words or a melody, then I know I have to get up and write it down. Before I used to, uh, you know, you have a, you have an answering phone when someone says hello, hello, I'm not here. You know, uh, please give, send me your message. You know, like this. So I, I put it in that. I said I was singing, what I was or speaking the words into that to be also, so I won't forget. Anyway, any other question? He's sharing uh, his uh, realization that he had the same experience with the melody uh, for the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Uh, sometimes he had some nice melodies in his head, but he wanted to record it, but he didn't. And later he couldn't remember uh, this yeah. melody anymore. And you have to do it right away. Yeah. Other question? Okay, then I wish you all a lovely day in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Kantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Hari Hari Bo. Little more enthusiastic. <laughs>
Yes.